hope you guys are having a blessed morning so far. I know it's been a while since I've been on YouTube here, which I'm enjoying not having to be on YouTube every day. So, because I'm actually enjoying kicking it with my family over here, you know, and just doing all the stuff. But at the same time, I have not forgotten about you all. But I want to bring up this message uh, because me and my wife was talking two days ago, you know, and, and how, you know, concerning the book of John, and, and there was a couple of things that were just kind of caught in that, that came up that I felt like I need to also, you know, kind of clarify um, with those who are listening so that you can have assurance of your salvation and understand that God does not lie. And when God said um, that he gives eternal life, he literally meant that, you know, and he made sure that there's proof of that eternal life the instant you believe so that you don't have to worry when am i going to get it is it something else i have to do to make sure i have it he made sure you had it instant instantaneously the moment you believe in the lord jesus christ which is a testimony concerning his son the only begotten son jesus christ before i begin let's talk about the gospel it's found in first corinthians 15 1 through 4. It tells us that jesus christ dies for our sins according to the scriptures was buried and rose again the third day for our justification now we know that jesus who is the eternally self-existing son of god left heaven was born of a virgin lived the perfect life never sinned went to the cross and shed his precious blood on the cross of calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins past present and future and to reconcile us back to god and to give us eternal life listen there is so many promises that god has made to believers and I wish you guys would just come to terms with these promises and see that God wants what's best for you and he truly, truly loves you. He, when he said he loves you, he's not making it up. It's not the way we understand love. He loves you deeper than you can imagine. Why? Because that love is in Christ, his son. Because when he sees us, he sees us in his son. That's the point. Because of our faith in him, and believing in his son jesus christ who he is and what he's done for us this is so important you must understand who jesus is he's not just a brother somewhere or just or just someone who decided to you know cause like some jewish people say he was just a jew who just was a troublemaker for the romans you know that got himself crucified that is not it jesus is the messiah he is the expected one he is the one that the prophets spoke of in the Old Testament concerning coming and also concerning his, his, his birth, his ministry, and also his death, burial, resurrection. He's all spoken in the Old Testament prophets and he fulfilled that. No one else can claim that. And not only that, Jesus is also alive and right now he sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Guys, you must believe this testimony concerning his son, Jesus Christ. Believe God when he tells you that anyone who believes in his son, that person has eternal life. That's all you have to do is put your childlike faith in the son, Jesus Christ. Trust God, the father, in his word and trust that what the son has done on the cross, he accomplished for you. All these promises is available to each one of us because God loves us daily. With that being said, let's dive into the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, as you can say, anytime you hear the Bible says, as it was spoken of, or you, or as scripture says, means it's been referred to before, means that message has been preached somewhere else, okay? And whenever Jesus mentions that he refers to the Old Testament prophets, why is he saying that? Because the Jews at the time, they went to the synagogue and they read the Old Testament prophet books. They were reading that, you know what I'm saying? So that's what they read in the tabernacles, you know? So it's not like people didn't know who he was. Everything about him is written already prior to him coming, you know? Just like everything about him is already written concerning the rapture of the church before he comes to rapture the church also. Again, there are people who are gonna believe and there are people who won't believe. We're not here to argue with people. We just present them with the truth and the facts of scripture. They can either believe it or choose not to. The choice is theirs. But let me remind you guys of something. When the church gets rapturous and it will, 
there will be a tribulation. And all who have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ at that time by faith alone, those people, guess what? They're going to be here for that tribulation. And then you're going to enter God's judgment with the unbelievers. Why? Because you rejected the message of the cross. You rejected Christ alone. You didn't think that Jesus Christ did it. Okay? You think what he did was temporary and that he requires your assistance. He does not. What Jesus accomplished, he said, it is finished. The death is paid in full. Okay? The judgment has been satisfied. The battle has been won. Okay? He completed all these things for us. So we have nothing to worry about when it comes to the promises that God has made to us. Okay? All who have ear, I pray that you hear this and that you listen and take heed that you do not be deceived with those people who sit around telling, telling you that you must repent of your sins in order for you to get saved. No, the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have changed your mind from your unbelief prior to believing. Okay? So that's the word repent is to change your mind. Metanoia. Okay? Change your mind. It has nothing to do with change, you know, repenting of sins because no one ever does that. You claim you repent of your sins, but you still sin. So which means you have not repented. And some of you claim that you do not sin after you got saved, which is the stupidest thing ever because you still have your flesh. You are not walking righteously upright 24-7, seven days a week. That is impossible for us humans to do that. We are not God, okay? So on, on, on to, unless you equate yourself to be a God who is perfect all the time, then by all means, uh, you put yourself in a place of worship and you do not deserve that because you're a human being. OK, so I said this to tell you all the people who's making um, all these extra remarks concerning salvation, that in order for you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you must first stop everything you're doing, not coming as you are, but stop everything you're doing. And then some will tell you, oh, by the way, um, now here's the thing. I'm not telling you to 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 go out there and, and go start acting crazy, doing all kind of no, no one is saying that. When you understand what Christ has accomplished for you and all he went through for your sake, there has to be a gratitude coming from the person receiving a free gift. If someone gives you a free gift that you are undeserving of, something that you know for a fact you don't deserve, you will be grateful for that. Okay? All of us are. Our actions sometimes might not show that, but it doesn't mean that we're not grateful and we're not thankful for it and we acknowledge that gift. We don't discredit the grave. We don't, none of us discredit the gift of God. You can't do that because you know you never earned it. There's nothing you can do to earn it. There's nothing you can do to please God outside of Christ. If you want to please God, the Bible tells you that in order to please God, you can only please Him by faith. And He already told you that your righteousness, which all the good things you think you're doing and all the perfect things you think you're doing, it is filthy rags, you know what I'm saying, in His sight. Why would he say that? Because he said that we are, none of us are good. So therefore, nothing that we can present to him is good on our own flesh. This is why we need the righteousness of Jesus Christ by faith. And the only way you can receive that righteousness is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has accomplished for you, who he is. The eternally self-existing son of God means he was not created. He was not born to be Jesus Christ. He was already self-existent with God the Father. Read Psalms 8. Oh, no, not Psalms 8, I'm sorry. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. You can read Genesis 1, you know, when you hear the plural tense being used, but also read Proverbs chapter 8. And you can also see right there as you, as you read further down that the son was always with the father. So I'm here to tell you, stop believing the lies, people, okay? Time is short. It literally is. If you're not paying attention to what's happening around us, you really must understand. We're not living in 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 like times where people say, oh, you know what? It's the same thing happening. No, this is different. Anyone with eyes can see it. It is absolutely different right now, okay? Please, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I know I put a lot of emphasis on this because many people are dying every day and going straight to hell. Because they have rejected the message of the gospel. Because you know what? They're living their life. They think their best life is here on earth. It is not that. Okay? Life is nothing but a vapor. 
Everything we see here is only temporary to us. Why? Because we are going to die one day. I mean, before the, you know, before the rapture. Or those who stay alive during the rapture will be raptured. But you don't know that. No, none of us know how long we're going to be here or when the rapture is going to be. None of us know that. This is why we live every day trusting God and believing in who he is and what he's done. He is faithful and just and he is righteous and he will continuously love you because you are his child. He's not going to stop loving you. Okay. With that being said, let's dive in here. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, keep my commandments. Many people like to use this verse here and say, see, you got to keep the Ten Commandments. That, that's what Jesus is telling you. This is not what he's referring to. For those who are not aware, when Jesus speaks, when he speaks, it may make a bold statement. A lot of times what he sees is he speaks based on what he's telling you. What he's telling you is a commandment. I'm commanding you to believe what I'm saying. It is a command because God has declared it that you will believe in his son. That commandment has nothing to do with the Ten Commandments, but about everything he's taught about him, the kingdom. Okay? Remember, he's speaking to the Jews here. He's speaking about the kingdom. Okay? And who he is, receiving eternal life. Okay? So he, everything he's told them about him, he repeated that. He's telling them this. But what God does is he also clarifies his statement, as you will see as we read further down. Look what it says. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. So, again, this right here already discredits the whole idea of being a Ten Commandment. You don't get to keep the Ten Commandments to receive the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Let's get that clear. Because then you have to tell people, yeah, you have to keep the law. And not believe in the gospel, but just keeping the law in order to receive the Holy Spirit. So that automatically scratches that. So clearly he's not talking about the Ten Commandments here. So what is that commandment then? Well, we know from Ephesians 1 what it tells you. You believe the gospel, you receive the Holy Spirit, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. But he, he, he will you know, explain further down. Look what it says. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Clearly he is the comforter, but he said I will give you another comforter. Why would that be? Because he's not going to be physically there with them. Because he's leaving. So he will send another. But he again, he's going to explain himself further down. That he may abide with you forever. You hear that? The key word here is forever. This comforter that's going to come, that he will send to you when you keep the commandment, which is believing in the gospel, you have obeyed God. You are no longer children of disobedience. Because children of disobedience are those who deny the gospel, who reject it. But God's commandment is that we believe the, the gospel concerning his son. He's, he's made that clear over and over and over. If you reject it, then you are children of disobedience. Okay? But if you believe it, he will send the comforter, another comforter, okay? Which, he, again, he will explain that it is the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, Muhammad, like some Muslims try, trying to claim, he clarifies himself. Look what it says. Even the spirit of truth. Now you have to ask yourself. He says the comforter. But he's also the spirit of truth. Screw up here John 14 6. What did he say? Thomas said unto him. We're going to start with five. Lord we know not where else thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him. I am the way. The truth. Hear that? The truth. And the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, so now he's saying, even the spirit of truth. He already told you that he is the truth. So what spirit is he talking about? His spirit. It is the spirit of Christ himself. Okay? Whom the world cannot receive because they do not know him, right? Why? Because as it seeth him not. Because the Holy Spirit, you can't see the Holy Spirit. Because it's the spirit. Okay? Neither know it him. The world don't know him because you're an unbeliever. So you wouldn't know the Holy Spirit. So again, this is something that's given to those who knows him because they have believed in him. Okay? So it, no one can claim that they have the Holy Spirit if you're not saved. I'm sorry. It's just not happening. The Holy Spirit is only given to those who are saved. It means they have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Period. And they're sealed with the Holy Spirit. 
If you're not saved, it means you reject the message of the gospel. Guess what? You don't have the Holy Spirit. You still operate in the flesh, whether you like it or not. You're still in darkness. You know, you can fake all you want to, fake tongue speaking, fake your, you know, <laughs> water baptism to, you know, for salvation, all this stuff you, you guys do talk, talk about repenting of sin. Clearly, they don't have the Holy Spirit. This is why they speak that way. You know what I mean? But those who have believed the gospel have the Holy Spirit. So now, can someone be deceived after they believe the gospel and still seal the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. This is why you have to learn and have to abide in the truth. Because if not, you can be carried away. It doesn't mean that you're not, you're not saved. You have the Holy Spirit, but you're not going to be operating from that position anymore. Why? Because you have been deceived, but you're still saved. You're still safe. You see what I'm saying? So, for all of you who think you can lose your salvation, that doesn't happen. Okay? Once you receive it, you have it. Now, look what it says here. For because he said him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. Why would he say ye know him? Well, they don't know no Holy Spirit, but they know Christ because Christ is with them. Why is that important? He's saying, the spirit I'm going to send is my spirit to you because you already know me. You see what I'm saying here? Now, he, oh, I mean, he, he makes it so simple. For he dwelleth with you. Who was there with them the whole time? Jesus Christ. They have not received the Holy Spirit that abides with them forever. That's not going to happen until Christ ascends into heaven. But Christ is there with them. And, and look what it's saying. And shall be in you now. You see what I'm saying? So Jesus just made a promise to us saying, not only will you receive me, but yours, I'm, I'm going to be in you. I mean, this is so profound, guys. You can't be in Christ and Christ in you. And then he, he said, and then, oh, yeah, well, you know, what? Mm, nah, you know, I don't like how you're acting. So guess what? I'm just going to get myself out of it. This is a promise. He said forever it means the spirit will abide and he will be in you forever. You cannot be unsaved when you have the Holy Spirit about it in you forever, guys. Scripture is so simple. And then he goes to clarify himself. I will not leave you comfortless. Why would he be telling him that? Because he's going back to heaven physically. That's why. I will come to you. Look at that. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. How he just told him. I'm coming to you through the Holy Spirit, which is my spirit, the spirit of truth, my own spirit. My spirit is going to come and he will be in you. This is why he just told him and he's clarifying. Okay. And look what he's saying. Yet a little while and the world see me no more, but ye see me. Why would he say that? Because he already promised them the Holy Spirit, which is his spirit. Okay. And look what he says. Because I live, ye shall live also. Again, the promise to every born again believer. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Why would he say in that day? What day? Remember, there's a Pentecost coming, okay? When they shall receive the Holy Spirit. Again, everything he's speaking to them to let them, these are all promises that will be fulfilled, and it was fulfilled, by the way, okay? And look what he's saying here. He that had my commandments, hear that? Remember when he studied, if you love me, keep my commandments? Okay. He that had my commandment, what commandment is that? Not the law, because clearly we have just disproved that it's not the law. And keeping them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall also, I mean, shall be love of my father. And I, I will love him and will manifest myself to him. How is that not so clear? What commandment? The gospel. Means you hear the gospel, which is the commandment that he's told you. You keep it because you have believed it. When you reject the gospel, then you don't love God. You clearly don't love God. You can claim all you want to. He told you how to get saved, who he is, and you reject that, saying, no, that's not enough. Jesus didn't accomplish it all. He, even though he said it is finished, you're saying it is not finished because you have something to add to it. What have you learned concerning adding anything to God is doing? God never accepts anything that we filthy humans touch concerning his own work if he's doing something he's doing it solely on his own without our help and if he's offering it to you you will be smart enough to receive it and after man i know what 
not quite there. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm saying to help you out, God. Really, would you now? Again, guys, let us be wise and not be stupid when it comes to a free gift that's been offered to us. I can't even understand what's going through with a lot of people, how they want to sit here and argue over the doctrine that God has told you it is free. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to any of us. It belongs to God. Salvation belongs to the Lord. He told you that. Therefore, he give it as he choose. And he chose to give it for free. You have no say in that matter. All you have is uh, uh, a, uh, to do is just simply receive what has been offered to you and be grateful about it. That's it. Anyway, reading further now. He said, Judas said unto him, not, not Judas Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? They ask some very vital questions for clarification. This is what the Spirit is doing, man. Look what he said. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Remember he used the word commandment before? Now he's changed it to words because he's trying to clarify. So you understand his behavior. this has nothing to do with the law. The law is not the word. The law is different. Okay? This is the commandment means it's something that Jesus has been speaking the whole time about himself and about God the Father, you know, why he's here. He said, if you love me, then you have to keep my word, right? And look what he said. <laughs> and my father will love him and we, as in God the Father and God the Son, will come unto him and make our abode with him. This is why you hear us say, we have the fullness of the Godhead abiding in every born again believer. Why is that? You hear the promise given here when you believe the gospel. Okay? It's quite clear. And look what it says next. You see? Okay. And we'll come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. He go from commandments to words to sayings. Things I've been teaching you guys, things I've been telling you guys about myself. You see that? Again, he's making it as simple as he can get so that you cannot confuse the two. He clarifies and clarifies and clarifies so that no one can sit around him trying to claim he's talking about the Ten Commandments. And if he's still claiming it as a Ten Commandments, after reading this passage, you have a mental issue and you need to go see a psychiatrist. Like seriously, because like... Anyone trying to, even trying to, remotely trying to tell you anything different and you still don't want to hear it, at this point, I don't know what anyone can do to help you. Like, seriously. Because it's, 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 it's so clear right here. So clear. And look what it says here, though. He that loveth me not, keep it not my saints. And the word which ye hear is not mine. See? Again, he's clarifying but the fathers which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being present yet with you. But the Comforter, now he's going to explain who the Comforter is, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, you read this. He already told you the comforter he was sent, which is his own spirit. The father will send the spirit on his behalf, right, in his name, right? And this spirit is the spirit of truth who will teach us all things, but also bring to remembrance everything that we've learned about Christ, everything that Christ has spoken about himself to us, right? This is what he's promised us. This is something that's not going away. He said, it will be, I will be in you, means he's in you. He's not going to jump in and out. This is not the Old Testament where he jumped in and out. This promise is something different. It means he comes and he abides with you forever. He already made that promise to you. Why would you doubt? Now go with me to Ephesians 1. In Ephesians 1, we're going to start from verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he may gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him 
who worked all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, was the word of truth his saints, his commandments. Okay? The gospel of your salvation, that is that word of truth. He already told you he is the way, the truth, and the life, right? He told you I was saying the spirit of truth. Man, Paul is rewriting you. Jesus is that word of truth. Okay? The word of truth is the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed. He didn't say repented of sins and believed. Did he say that? No. After ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. There's a quick analogy here. God the Father has an envelope. You, a man, and God the, and God the uh, Father sent the Spirit of His Son, right? The Spirit of His Son and put both of you inside this envelope, this holy envelope, and then God the Father sealed it. So if he sealed it, how can you, who's a human being, by the way, unseal something that God has sealed? You have the Holy Spirit sealed with you in the envelope. It means he's part of you. Wherever you go, so is the Holy Spirit. Whatever you do, the Holy Spirit is there. Everything you do, you can escape him. You belong to him now, forever. Okay? How do you tell people, oh, but you know what? Even though Jesus said, you know, you can, you can, you can, uh, the, the, he will not lose any, but you can, you can walk away. That's the dumbest, the most obnoxious statement I've heard. Okay. That's an insult to God. You telling me that man is now stronger than God's grip? Really? I mean, only Satan will say some stupid stuff like this. Stop listening to this demonic messages from Satan that he has all his little minions preaching on YouTube, trying to have you stay deceived in your mind, thinking that God is lying to you. Anyone who calls God a liar is working for Satan. I'm telling you that right now, okay? And if you deny the promises of God, you're working for Satan. I said what I said. Because God is the truth. He told you that he cannot lie. He is the truth. Don't accuse him of lying, because when he makes a promise, he keeps his promises. He does not repent from the promise that he just made to us. He said he will not repent from it. He's not going to change his mind, because it is something that's forever. Or don't, don't get over oh, in the Old Testament, God repented. Yes, but that was not promised, though. God was making threats to them. If you don't do this, I'm going to do this to you. I'm bringing this judgment. This is not judgment. This is something totally different. This is a gift. Is not changing his mind on a gift. Jesus had to die. He had to suffer for our sins. That is the gift he brought to us. Okay? And we must receive this gift gladly. Okay? It is a free gift. Be, be like a child and receive a gift in joy. That's what children do. When you present a gift to a child, a child is excited and he's, he's happy or she's happy to receive that gift. Something that is undeserving. Okay? Please, stop playing with yourself, guys. Now, look what it says here. In him you also trust after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of the salvation. In whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Again, reading Ephesians 1 alone, you will see it is God doing all these things. There is nothing Man's hand is involved anyway. Everything is, is all God is doing this. God is, he's doing this. He's doing that. He's, it's all him doing that. He's working everything out all by himself. Don't need your help. So I tell you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, guys, and know for a fact that when you believe, you are eternally secure. The moment you believe is the moment your eternity begins with him. Okay? Salvation is of the Lord, and we walk out our salvation by faith, the same way we received it, not by works. Anyone who tells you to get to work, that you must work in order to please God, is a liar. Anyone who tells you, you know what, let me show you what the Bible says, just, just, just for sake of being right, okay? Okay. 
faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You hear that? That is faith. For by it, elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You hear that? Again, guys, when you talk about faith, this has nothing to do with something physical. You can't see faith. Okay? It's something I cannot... I mean, I mean, I don't know how much clear the Bible has to get for you to understand this. People are like, well, 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 proof of your salvation. You have to show me. You have to show me. All these fruit inspectors are shepherd for the devils. That's exactly who they are. Okay? You can't prove anything outside of someone's testimony. If someone has a testimony of Jesus Christ by faith, that is your brethren. Simple as that. You don't walk around and say, well, if you don't produce enough fruit, then that means you really haven't been saved. Or you're, That is a lie. That's a lie. Anyone tell you that eternal security is a message from the pits of hell, that person already has a place in hell for them if they don't repent and believe the gospel. And they want you to go to hell when you die. That person do, do not love you. They are not preaching the good news. They are preaching the worst possible news ever. Okay? Eternal security, everlasting life is all God has promised. And when he promised you that, guess what? All your sins are wiped clean. You have a clean slate with Christ all the time. Because he paid it all. Judged sins on the cross means you're not going to be judged for sins again. Because he already judged it on the cross. As long as you're in Christ, he's judged it on the cross. If you deny the message, then guess what? You have to pay for your sins for eternity, which can never be paid, by the way. That's why it's for eternity. You're going to be sitting here. Everything that God gives is eternity. Eternal life or eternal punishment. Pick one. Eternal punishment comes from rejecting the, the gospel. And eternal life comes from believing the gospel. You have a choice to make. Make the right one today. You're not guaranteed to see tomorrow or even the next 20 minutes. Many people are going to die today that left their homes not knowing today is their last day. They will, they're going to be going to work. Some won't even make it to work. And some won't make it home after work. That is just the reality of the life we live here on earth. Nothing here is permanent. Everything is only temporary here on earth. But you know what's permanent? Your eternity. Where you go after you die, that is permanent. That is not a temporary thing. And for those people who teach that people who go to hell only suffer for a little bit and then they stop existing are also a bunch of liars. They clearly are deceived by the enemy. Guys, with God, everything is eternity. Why? Because he is an, a God from eternity. Okay? He's a God from eternity. Means he has no beginning and no end. So everything that offers that has to do with God, guess what? It has no end. Means it's never going to end. If his suffering is going to be eternal, punishment means it will never end. If it's eternal life, then that will never end either. Make the wise choice today and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have nothing to lose but everything to gain. God bless you. Love you all.